not going to be your policeman. There's a reason why you separate military and the police. One fights the enemy, the state. The other serves and protects the people. When the military becomes both, then the enemies of the state tend to become the people. of the police and how and why the police is being militarized but I think everyone involved fails to realize why uh, the police sometimes uh, use military tactics and for that we have to look at what the police really is and that's a paramilitary organization now, a paramilitary organization is a semi-militarized force whose organizational structures, tactics, training, subculture, and often function are those similar to those of the professional military, but is not included in the state's formal armed forces. Um, it is usually equivalent to the military's light infantry force in terms of intensity, firepower, and organizational structure. Paramilitary may also commonly fall under the command of the military, even despite not being part of the military, it usually plays a vital role in the security of the state. Now, under the rule of law, a state may incorporate a paramilitary organization or armed agency, such as National Police Force, private volunteer militia, into its combatant armed forces. The other parties to be to a conflict uh, have to be notified thereof. I don't know who comes up with these rules. Uh, laws of war, but that's what it says. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, uh, let's look at every structure of how a police officer is developed from selection to training to um, actually uh, being out on the street, mental um, status when they're on runs, that kind of thing. Okay, so first thing we're going to look at is the selection process of a police officer. Now, police departments don't take this lightly. You go through a written exam, oral interviews, um, physical training tests, um, drug screenings, polygraphs, conditional offers, and when it reaches the merit board, you're approved and you get your papers to go to the academy. Uh, next after that is the police training. Okay, now besides uh, physical training, classroom training, firearms training, and physical restraint techniques, and also simulated uh, combat environments, police officers are also trained in what's called the force continuum, which you see in this graph right here, and we will get ready to delve uh, deeper into this. Now the force continuum is a mental, it's trained to police officers as a sort of scale or a graph. For every action of a perpetrator, there's an equal and opposite reaction to the police, uh, for the police officer to take. However, it can jump. So if you are a police officer and you come to a person that is pointing a gun at everybody or shooting, you don't start at the bottom. You start at that level that they're at. So we're going to go through it. Level one is police presence. Now this is where you see your police officers out on the streets. This usually cuts down a lot of shenanigans. Now the more dangerous a situation is to the public and to the police officers, the more, uh, say, militarized you will see the police. For example, the riots that we've recently had. Level two is verbal commands. Okay, verbal commands is probably one of the best ways to diffuse the situation so that everybody can go home and nobody has to spend a night in the Gray Bar Hotel. Um, now, these situations are, um, you know, your typical situations uh, where police officers think they can uh, diffuse the situation as nonviolent. Now, the next one is going to be our level three soft hand techniques. 
Okay, soft hand techniques include, but not limited to, wrist locks, come-alongs, um, and other uh, ways to deal with a minimal force uh, combatant. Uh, in other words, someone that's not armed but not obeying verbal commands. Uh, however, if it does reach this level, you're more than likely going to spend a night in the Gray Bar Hotel. Okay, level four is what's called hard uh, techniques or uh, more physical techniques that's uh, strikes and takedowns. Now, this is that level you'll start to see a lot of this happen. People taking out cell phones and cameras and recording the police. But if you reach this level, if anybody reaches this level, congratulations, you've graduated to the cop is really going to kick your ass uh, uh, level because this means you become really physically combative and the police have to use um, things like batons, tasers, um, and pepper spray to subdue you and your tr your reservation at the Gray Bar Hotel is definitely assured in this case. Okay, and finally we are here with level 5 and that's deadly force. Now, again, I said in the beginning, a cop can go from level 1 to level 5, depending on the situation they come up against. So if an officer comes up against someone that uh, is creating a, or committing a violent act and has a firearm or knife or other type, a deadly weapon type, the officer can legally shoot to kill. Um, if they are taking someone hostage or if um, a suspect is... Um, charging at an officer or making um, or making you know violent or seemingly violent um, actions toward an officer an officer can't shoot to kill and in that case your stay at the gray bar hotel uh, is the least of your worries because if they do use deadly force nine times out of ten you'll be pushing up daisy Okay, now that we've gone through uh, selection and training of police officers, uh, and of course they've reached graduation day, uh, everybody now has a mental um, idea of what the force continuum is and how they should approach it, um, and so now they're ready to go out into the streets. Now this is after three or six months of training, uh, so they are definitely trained in, in how to do their jobs. Now. Uh, this is uh, the end of part one. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. There are there will be a part two uh, coming soon, and uh, we'll delve uh, more into uh, a police officer's work and again helping the public understand why they are seeing a more militarization of the police. Um, this uh, aspect we covered, you know, not only the selection or training and the force continuum, um, but we we're also looking at uh, the starting steps as to why you will see uh, a more militarized presence in certain situations. So, like, comment, subscribe, and um, check us out on Facebook uh, on the Black Purpose Society, and you guys have a great day.